Turns out that there was a couple of you left on the channel, so let's do another one. Okay, let's start with our second part of the overclocking guide. So, in the first part, which uh, if you haven't seen, you should check it out. Uh, I've gone over a basic guide with quite basic functions to show you guys how to get a you know a five gigahertz plus overclock without messing around too much with memory or timings or um, anything like that or even cache frequency so I've really just gone for CPU overclock over voltage it controlled uh, power management settings and then in this guide I'm going to extend on that so what we're going to do is going we're going to go beyond uh, just a basic CPU overclock we're going to go for a serious memory overclock we're going to go for a uh, serious um, cache overclock core overclock the whole lot um, and I'll explain what various options are all right so um, what I'm going to do is so I, I don't uh, waste too much of your time going through various functions I'll load one of my profiles that I was playing with so as you remember in the first video I only had a couple of profiles saved so uh, this time around I'll, I've got substantially more so let's just walk through what I've uh, changed since so initially we just went for a 5 gigahertz overclock so, so the CPU ratio was, was set to 50 uh, the ring ratio or cache or uncore whatever you want to call it uh, was at 45 so 4.5 gigahertz essentially uh, so I've had a bit of a play and uh, I've obviously as you can tell overclocked that to 5 gigahertz as well now this particular one uh, is an interesting one and um, I guess warning uh, don't expect this to work um, so I would try to step it up so I would try maybe going to 47 first and then 48 and then 49 and then 50 just to make sure that that's how I went about um, getting 5 gigahertz I stepped it up so I didn't go straight for it um, in terms of voltage uh, there was one of the commenters in my f initial video saying I should uh, you know bump my system agent voltage uh, system agent voltage is not going to help you with cache um, in fact uh, the Vico itself is tied to cache voltage so as you are increasing the Vico you are also uh, feeding the you know the ring ratio and cache voltage essentially and you're going to be able to see a result so a few variables um, in terms of cooling uh, uh, and voltage as well are necessary so cooling obviously I am on a just on a 240 Corsair cooler nothing special um, but as you go sub-zero uh, ring or ratio or cache frequency will increase as well as, the, as will the CPU okay so the other thing that I've done and you'll notice some pretty alarming looking volts here um, so the memory that I've got on my system is um, a kit of Corsair Samsung B die modules I don't know which version of B die they are but uh, this was also Corsair produced this part for me uh, so there you'll see that the part number is actually uh, DNS22 which is kind of nice of them and it's part of the whole Elite uh, series gift bag that they've given to a few overclockers a, a long time ago now 
this memory can run a hell of a lot more than 1.7. I haven't actually maxed out this memory, uh, but I haven't felt the need that I needed to go higher. And I guess if I went for a really extreme overclock, uh, I would probably experiment all the way up to maybe 2 volts or even 2.1 with this particular kit of memory. But um, for, for what I've tried to do here, I've gone for DDR4000. Um, that's what I need. The other thing that I did need to bump up, and this is important for memory overclocking, is VCC IO. You are going to have to bump this up. Um, I've gone to 1.45. Uh, this seems to be working okay. You have to be careful with this. Um, you could probably scale more, but there will be a point where this becomes unsafe. I wouldn't go past 1.5, and I know that uh, on LN2, uh, the, uh, uh, the, I've been told that chips can die from this voltage if it's too high. So 1.7, one for example, you can kill chips. So don't overdo this voltage. Uh, system agents overall will help um, uh, your CPU uh, in, improve signal and it will help uh, particularly with uh, memory overclocking, probably a little bit uh, elsewhere, but uh, I've bumped this up as well just to support this memory, memory clock. Now, the other difficult or tricky part here that I had to work out very slowly and as you'll see here I haven't really gone and populated all of the tertiary timings uh, I've only gone for a very basic overclock so far so it's still the memory I still haven't gone for a fully advanced you know timing setup as you can tell I've gone for the primary timing so 14 14 14 44 so CAS 14 straight uh, now, obviously, I did set TRFC and it's still quite loose, so I could probably tighten this a lot. Now, at the point, at the time of making this video and doing this testing, uh, Gigabyte still hasn't really sorted out their 1T timing, so I've left this auto and it's defaulting to 2T, so this will have a performance impact in certain things, like SuperPi, for example, that I've been testing. Uh, may not have as big an impact in you know other areas like games etc etc but uh, the important thing is very very tight latency 4000 cas 14 um, uh, you know this kit i couldn't do cas 12 there are kits that people are using that are actually doing cas 12 with this they are however using about 1.95 volts um, i am not uh, i'm just keeping it you know fairly safe i wouldn't be uh worried about using this on on a regular basis now the other thing with bdi is you do have to change the maximum value in windows so let's let's go for the save first so let's go save and exit let's see if we get this boot straight up so um, it did take me a little while to get to this point and to understand how this motherboard and this cpu operates so Again, uh, every CPU is a little different, so memory controller on this chip may not react or be exactly the same as, you know, potentially your memory controller. Uh, same thing when it comes to um, um, uh, uh, cache, you may, I don't know if you're going to be able to also get this uh, 5 gigahertz cache or not, obviously give it a shot. Uh, but anyway, so, 5 gigahertz in CPU, 10 core, 20 thread. We've got 2000 CAS 14 memory. It looks pretty impressive. 5 gigahertz on cache as well. Uh, um, how good is that? So, and I've also, as I mentioned, this is a Samsung BDI kit. And as you can see, it's a DNS 22 part number. Now it is meant to be rated for 3600 KS18, but we've obviously gone well over spec and uh, we are running it at a pretty handy uh, 4000 CAS 14. So that should give us a good performance uh, in various things. So uh, what I normally do, like I've done in the past videos is I will test with SuperPi. So, you know, do 1 million and then 32 million calculations. 
So let's just get uh, this out of the way. Well, that's interesting. I've had a fail. Um, I swear I tested 32M on this. I'm pretty sure I did, unless it was 14, 16, 16. Let's have a quick look. Uh, oh no, that was... Huh. Well, that's interesting. So, um, I have had this complete before, but for some reason, it has failed on me so let's try that again bit of a live overclocking thing going on here so I've bumped up the vCore and I've bumped up the memory voltage. The reason I bumped up vCore is because we'll probably end up bumping up CPU frequency later anyway, but also VDIM just to see whether that's going to address this memory instability. It could just be that I need a little bit more voltage. That's a bit odd since I've already tested so clearly it wasn't really 100% stable, which is why we always test. Okay, here we go. We finally got our SuperPi finished, so let's just shuffle through the CPZ windows to make sure that the clock's all as described. So we've got the 10900K at 5 gigahertz, uh, the Gigabyte Vision D, 4000 on memory, 5000 on cache using some Corsair, special Corsair uh, sticks. Um, let's do a uh, XTU and then we're going to do. Bit of a CSGO benchmark, I reckon. Let's just do that. So I've got a bunch of stuff running in the background. So that will probably affect the efficiency. Well, let's go for it. So we are actually uh, working with higher Vico because it, as you may recall, I've set a higher Vico in BIOS. Let me just double check if it was one point. Yeah, so I set 1.3 in BIOS. Um, and uh, obviously that'll probably have slightly higher load temperature. Okay, so another thing we're going to do is we are going to go for a bit of an overclock let's try and 5.3 gigahertz and run a uh, CSGO benchmark so 5.3 just run uh, CSGO okay so the overall score was 519 frames per second um, so let's try one more bump this may or not, not work but let's just give it one more try we will have a go at maybe 375 54 
Okay, so 5.4, 1.375. Let's go again. Wow, so we've managed to finish with a 5.4 gigahertz overclock at and reached a 522 frames per second average in this uh, benchmark. Um, I'll just jump into Windows again and hey, it won't let me do it. I think that's pretty incredible that we've managed to get such a an awesome overclock. So 5.4 gigahertz with 5 gigahertz and 4K memory um, using the Gigabyte Vision D. I mean, that is pretty substantial. Um, so yeah, there you go. This is Three a recap. More. So we've done um, 5 gigahertz initially overclock using uh, CPU and obviously 5 gigahertz on cache as well and 4k on memory CAS 14 and obviously bumped it up to as high as 5.4 gigahertz uh, averaging over 520 frames per second in the Counter-Strike benchmark using the I think it's an RTX uh, 2060 so uh, graphics card doesn't really make a huge difference in CSGO as long as it's reasonable enough I think uh, the CPU will then add all the frames and allow it to scale um, so yeah that was pretty cool um, so we will go into a more advanced guide again so part three uh, with the liquid hydrogen or single stage so uh, stay tuned for that that's coming soon again bye